G'day everyone, welcome to the Trade Mate Sports Podcast. We have a very special edition of the podcast today. We're actually doing an Australian version of the podcast. So we're going to preview the Big Bash League uh, Season 9, which kicks off next Tuesday. And to do this, I have brought in my great mate, Jason, who is a cricketing expert, in my opinion, watches way too much cricket for his well-being. Um, So he is here to preview Season 9 of the Big Bash. Are you there, mate? I'm here, mate. Pleasure to be with you all. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it. Yes, mate. It's a pleasure to be here too. Um, so to get kick-started, the tournament does start next Tuesday. And for you people that don't know too much about the Big Bash League, it is a 2020 competition. So 20 overs for each team, which basically means in simple terms that it's about a three-hour game. It's a lot more entertaining than a test match or a, you know, a five-day test match. Uh, so it's just a shortened version of cricket, lots of big hits. So it's, uh, it's an entertainment league, to put it simply. Um, so yeah, to, to make sure you understand the, the format of the competition this year, uh, it's a bit hard to explain. There are five teams that can get through to the finals this year. Um, in, in other years, it's only been four. So it is the first time they're trying this competition out uh, with five teams. Basically how it works is once you get your top five, you go fourth versus fifth and you go first versus second. So the winner of the first versus second goes straight into the final, and then the winner of fourth versus fifth plays third. So let's just say in this case, fifth wins. So you've got fifth versus third in that case. Then the winner of fifth versus third plays the loser of first and second. So let's say the loser of first and second was second. So then you'd have second versus, let's say, third, the winner of third versus fifth. I know this is sounding probably very confusing, Um, but then the winner of second versus third would play the winner in the final. So it's five games uh, that eventuates with a winner. But yeah, we'll kick things off with the Adelaide Strikers. We'll go in alphabetical order. That seems the most logical way to go about it. Um, Adelaide Strikers, last year they finished seventh. Um, and this year they're coming in at odds 7.5. I think they're about third favourite. Don't uh, quote me on that. Actually, it might be less, maybe fifth. Um, and yeah, I'm just having a look at their... On your, on your screen now, you'll come up with a predicted starting 11 we've come up with. Um, key buys this year, Cameron White, a lot of experience there, which is great. Um, you've also got Harry Conway and uh, Phil Salt coming in. Phil Salt coming over from England. Uh, key losses, Ben Lachlan, he's gone to the heat. That's a massive loss, I think. And also Colin Ingram. Jason, mate, what do you think of the Adelaide's uh, strikers' chances this year? I reckon they've got a pretty good squad this year. Uh, last year, they severely underperformed. So I'm expecting them to bounce back this year. Phil Salt is a great addition to the squad. He top scored for Sussex in the Vitality Blast, which is the English County season T20 competition this year. This was also coached by Jason Gillespie, who's the coach of the Adelaide Strikers. So there's a bit of familiarity there. I think their top order is really heavy and really strong. Uh, Expect to see Alex Carey and um, Jake Weatherall resume their opening partnership that was so successful for them when they won the competition two years ago. And I'd expect to see Phil Salt slot in at three. Uh, Quite a formidable opening partnership for the first six overs. Yeah, mate, it is a, it's a quality bowling lineup. I mean, I'm just looking through it now. You've got um, Rashid Khan, probably the best big bash player in the world. Um, you've got Michael Nisa, quality. Siddle, all the experience in the world, as we all know. Um, you've got Billy Stanlake, an up-and-coming paceman, uh, could be seen in Aussie colours again soon. So, mate, their bowling lineup, there's no problem there. I guess if you had to pick at something, it would be their batting lineup, maybe. Travis Head will most likely be out for the start of the series with his Aussie duties, so um, that'll test their depth there. Um, yeah, so not looking, not looking too deep in the batting lineup. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you'll, you'll find as well later in the tournament in January when Australia have their tour of India that you'll see the likes of Alex Carey drop out. However, I expect him to be replaced with Travis Head coming back. Now, in terms of the bowling, Rashid Khan's the number one T20 bowler in the world for a reason. He's an absolute weapon. And with over half of their games under lights, so I expect to see his wrong them to be hard to pick. And you've got the likes of Big Billy Stanlake fit and firing at the moment. Um, pushing for selection in the World 2020 side next year in Australia. So I expect him to have a really big uh, BBL09. Okay, mate. Yeah, well, they're looking pretty decent. Um, 
If I had to make a prediction on how I think they'll finish up, I have gone with fifth place, so just getting into the finals. Um, yeah, like I said before, great bowlers. Maybe short on a bit of depth in the bowlers if they do lose a few to injury or Aussie selections. Um, and not enough big names in their batting lineup for me, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I've got them finishing in fifth. What about you, mate? Yeah, I've actually got them uh, a bit higher than fifth this year. I've got them coming in at third. I just think that top order, if it clicks like it did two years ago, uh, they'll be extremely hard to beat. The key, the key is just to limit the losses when the Australian players depart. But yeah, I, I reckon they've got a really good squad this year, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them pointing the end of the season. Okay, mate. We will see how they go. We'll move on to the Brisbane Heat. My team, mate, never been so excited for a BBL season like this before. With the Heat, they are looking absolutely superb. They disappointed last year, finishing in fifth place. This year, they come in as favourites at uh, $5 odds. Um, all right, let me run through some of their key buyers. It is, um, it is very impressive. Uh, so you've got Glenn Lachlan, as I said before, A.B. de Villiers, probably the buyer of the BBL season, Tom Banton from England, Zahir Khan. So they're some of the big names. Um, and they've only lost a sweepologist, Rossi. So, um, yeah, not to be honest, not the biggest loss there, let's be honest. Um, but, yeah, mate, they are looking absolutely formidable. For me, the biggest signing, though, is coach Darren Lehman. Um, massive, massive in there for the Heat. He did win a tournament with them earlier um, in the BBL, so he has got that experience of a uh, winning mentality with the Heat, um, and I think he's a massive in for them, mate. What do you think? Yeah, I couldn't couldn't agree with you anymore with the Darren Lehman comment. Uh, he he rose to Australian coach through his coaching and winning of the Big Bash title a few years ago. Um, unfortunately for the Heat, since he's departed, they haven't really performed. They've over-promised and under-delivered, but arguably the signing of the tournament. Big AB de Villiers coming from <laughs> South Africa, Mr. 360 degrees, can hit the ball anywhere. And if they win enough games in the front half of the year, watch out because he'll win the rest of them on his own um, come January. Um, big Bash brothers, Chrissy Lynn, you know, he's, he's got the flair, he's got the attitude, he's got the confidence. Um, hopefully this year he'll be able to put it together consistently and we'll see how we go. And Tom Banton, another absolute gun who debuted for uh, England this year. He's coming in, he, he's coming to, to show everybody what he's made of and really push his credentials for the World T20 um, at the end of next year as well. So, you know, they're a gun side. Benny Lachlan gives them so much confidence and much needed arsenal in the bowling lineup. Um, his death bowling, his fielding, his all-round presence in the team can't be undervalued. So I, I've got, I reckon they're going to be really good this year. Oh mate, I didn't think it was actually possible for the um, for the batting lineup to get any better for the Heat. Let's just run through it here. You've got Bryant. He performed massively last year for them. Banton coming in. Lynn, the best BBL batsman for me of all time. Uh, Matt Renshaw, Australian batsman. Uh, Sam Heaslett, Ben Cutting, big hitting Ben Cutting, and Pearson can hit them too. Um, and then, yeah, like we said, uh, A.B. de Villiers is coming in later. So it's an incredible batting lineup. It's gotten better, even though they've lost Brendan McCallum. Um, the question I have made is Joshy, uh, Joshy Lawler. Um, you didn't have him in your predicted starting 11. Um, he played pretty well for us last year. What do you think? Yeah, Lola might get in there. Um, I. I think it'll depend on whether Jimmy Patterson's available, to be honest. I, Patterson will give him that option, that grunt, that fear factor up front. And I just think they'll need him in the side just to give the, the young boys in the team some confidence. Um, Lachlan's going to play. Your, your international in Zahir Khan will play until Marijib gets over. Um, you know, he, he could play instead of Lachlan, but I don't think they're going to bring Lachlan in and not play him. And you've got to play a spinner, and that, that's where you've got your, your Mitch Swepson or maybe one of our very own Matty Kuhneman gets a run. <laughs> He's playing extremely well at the moment. Um, his BBL last year was really promising, and he's taken his game to a new level. Um, spoken to him last week, actually very excited to get involved and get into it. So, you know, I reckon the biggest issue for the Heat might be their batting order, to be honest, and figuring out where they all fit in. Um, they're all openers, they're all top order bats, and I guess you can only have two that start up front. So I reckon Maxie Bryant gets the gig there with Tommy Banton and Chrissy Lynn comes in later. So, uh, mate, they just look so good on paper. I, 
I can't see a fault with them. Maybe their bowling depth, but yeah, they're killing it. Yeah, mate, they are looking absolutely superb. I'm very much looking forward to watching them this season. And by the way, I love the name drop of Matty Kuhneman. Um, for you guys watching out there, you probably got no idea, but we uh, we did go to school with Matty Kuhneman. So, uh, yeah, just a little name drop there by Jace. Well done, mate. Um, but, yeah, mate, uh, it's pretty obvious, but I have got them coming in first. How about you? Yeah, I've got them at first. Uh, if, mate, if they don't win it this year, they won't win it again for a while, so... <laughs> Um, A.B. De Villiers, superstar. Yeah, no one, will, no one will beat him this year. Oh, mate, I cannot wait to see Linny and A.B. go at it. It's going to be something special to watch. But, um, yeah, no, they're looking great. Uh, we'll move on to the Hurricanes, though, and us salivating over the heat. Um, last year, the uh, Hurricanes finished first, but they missed out. Uh, on the grand final by uh, getting knocked out in the first round of the finals. So shocking stuff there. They did dominate the competition for the most part last year, but they just stumbled at the final hurdle, or the second last hurdle, basically. Um, They come in at odds of uh, $7 this year. Um, as you can see on your screen, we've got our predicted lineup there. Their key buyers this year are David Miller, massive buy there, and Scotty Boland. Um, I'm not sure who they've lost, mate. Have you got that on you? Yeah, well... Um... Big Joffre Archer, our, our Ashes nemesis this year. Um, he's actually not going to be able to. He's not going to play this year just because of his duties for England in South Africa on their tour. So um, for him, that's a, that's a big loss for the side. I, I reckon. Um, funny, funny. We mentioned Hobart's finals last year. They're the reason for the change in the final structure um, yeah. for BBL09, finishing on top, losing in the first week of the finals, and they were gone. So. That's why they've restructured the finals this year, just to give the team finishing on top a bit of a bit of safety net. So yeah, I I agree with it too. But Hurricanes are a funny one this year. Um, Matty Wade will be out for the first half of the year due to the Test cricket, um, which is a huge loss for him at the top with Darcy Shaw. Because not only is he a a good ball striker, but I think he's he's cricket now, and he's know how really helped Darcy last year. And I think he gave him a bit of confidence to keep going. So I don't think that can be underestimated. Yeah, I, I think their starting lineup is good enough to get into the finals. Um, but yes, Aussie, Aussie call-ups, it could be their undoing with their squad depth, um, especially if someone like Darcy Short gets called up. Um, I'm just looking at their team now. The batting lineup looks formidable. I love the experience of George Bailey. Um, and then you've got the likes of Faulkner, like, the man is a machine. He's the, he's a T Twenty specialist, um, but yeah, I think yeah they could be their undoing could be if the likes of McDermott, Darcy Short get called up to the Aussie team. Darcy Short seems to be a bit on the outer with the Australian selectors at the moment, so oh, they, nice. they should hopefully have him for the full year. Um, Ben's Ben's probably the one likely to to get the call up. Uh, he's playing some really good cricket at the moment. He's unlucky not to get a hundred in the Shield just gone, but good yeah, man. I. They've got they've got a really strong bowling attack in terms of speed. Um, I just wonder if they're going to go for too many runs and whether they can chase them down. You know, Nathan Ellis is an up and coming youngster who's really broken into the Tasmanian side this year. Raleigh Meredith, quick but can go for some runs too. So if they can restrict sides, I can see them winning. But we'll see how we go. So mate, I've got them finishing in fourth. Um, they might, but, you know, there, there is a possibility, like I said before, that they might just miss out um, because of people on Australian duty. What about you? I've got them missing the finals this year. I just wow. think that, that um, yeah, yeah uh, it's the first big call of the, of the podcast, but I've got them finishing sixth and just missing out. Um, I threw it up. I, I was thinking about it with the five-team edition with them and the, the Renegades, but... I know Joffre Archer not there, the depth's not quite there, and I think I think a little bit of inexperience in the bowling lineup might might tell its toll later in the tournament. Okay, mate, we'll move on to the Melbourne Renegades. Um, you've got two Melbourne sides, by the way, guys. So you've got the Renegades and the Stars. We will start with the Renegades, last year's champions, and they come in this year as third favourites um, at odds of six dollars. I don't know how they won last year, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, the Stars obviously choked a bit in the final, but um, it was a massive surprise. They did punch above their weight quite a bit. Um, but, yeah, they come in this year, relatively similar squad. Not many losses and buys. Um, their only buy has been Sean Marsh. That's a great buy for them. I'm surprised he actually made the trip over from Perth to uh, to Melbourne. Uh, he seemed to be quite a uh, Perth patriot, I like to say. 
But um, yeah, so he's come over, brings a lot of experience, but they've actually lost a lot of experience in um, Cameron White. So um, yeah, mate, what do you what do you think about the Renegades this year? Mate, I couldn't agree with you anymore. How did they win the comp last year? I re- I reckon they were the most overperforming side you've seen since Leicester City won the Premier League. Um, look, they got they've got a good team on paper, but they've also got an aging list. There's no you've got the middle of the road guys in the squad like your Bo Webster's. Um, yeah, I look Sammy Harper's there as well. It could be, they could be anything. Look, they could bite me in, up the backside this time and tell me, look how good we are, and they go back to back. But once Finch and Richardson both disappear to India for the one day series, um, I don't, yeah, I see I see a bit of lacking depth there. Jack Wildermuth's there as an all rounder. He's playing all right for Queensland at the moment. Um, Dan Christian, arguably one of the most successful T20 players yeah, in yeah. the world. I don't know what it is with him, but every T20 comp he plays in, he wins. Um, he is in South Africa at the moment. I read the other day their team hadn't won a game all year, but this <laughs> that would have to be the first time he is an absolute match winner, can do it with bat and ball, and his experience is invaluable. Um, Sean Marsh coming over gives the top order a bit of solidarity if they lose an early wicket as well. So, yeah, it, it'll be interesting, I think. I think their home ground plays a lot into it too. Marvel Stadium is a really unique pitch, um, a drop-in pitch on the footy ovals, short square boundaries. It's not really a run run making t- run making pitch, and that's when the likes of Kane Richardson come into his own with his changes of pace. But yeah, um, look, I don't think they've got the caliber of the internationals, and I think internationals win your tournaments, and that's what they're paid to do. Mohamed Nabi's getting on a bit. I think he's just announced his retirement from Afghanistan Test cricket because he's getting in age a bit. Harry Gurney, everyone tells me how good he is. Um, yeah, from England, I'm, I'm not quite sure. And Shinwari yeah. from Pakistan, he's playing for Pakistan in their Test team at the moment. But after their recent tour of Australia, I reckon anybody would be getting a game in that side. So. Um, yeah, yeah. I really, I really like how they're an experienced team. I think, I think it's a really underrated thing in BBL, just in general. Um, I do, I do love an experienced team. So you have got the likes of Finch, Marsh, Harris, Christian, an incredible T20 player, um, and then you've got uh, the leading wicket taker from last year, uh, Kane Richardson, in there. So um, yeah, I, I think an experienced team. Uh, really helps them out. And even their, their coach, Michael Klinger, he just retired, but he's played BBL since the start, basically. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think they've um, they've got a lot of experience and I like that. My prediction for the for the Renegades, I've actually got them coming in third, mate. Um, I don't think they can win again, win the title again. Um, but, yeah, I'm predicting a third-place finish. Could be lower, but, yeah, I'll go with third place, mate. Yeah, look, I, I've got them making finals still and... I mentioned this earlier. I, I was throwing up between these guys and the Hurricanes to fill that fifth spot. Um, I guess once you get in the finals, anything can happen and who shows up on the day. But, you know, you mentioned Maxi Klinger. It's his first year as coach. Um, the Perth Scorchers, I think it was last year, they, they didn't perform very well under a first first or second year coach in Adam Voges. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um one, one kid I'd like to look for is this Jake Fraser McGurk. If he gets a go, he's an absolute gun, 17 years of age, just debuted for Victoria this year and absolutely killing it. He's my young player to watch for the tournament and hopefully he gets a good crack at it. Okay, we'll move to the other side of Melbourne then, mate. Um, On to the Melbourne Stars. Um, yeah, like I said before, not sure how they lost the final last year, mate. Um, it was an absolute choke and a half. Um, so they'll be ready to uh, ready and firing to regain the title that they should have won. Um, I've got them in second. I know I've gone early with my prediction there, but, mate, they have got a formidable starting 11. Um, really rivals the heat, I have to say. Um, the likes of Dale Stain coming in, Nathan coulson Oil, massive buy there. Uh, Hilton Cartwright, and they've only lost Dwayne Bravo, who wasn't obviously a very good player, but I think the, the buys outweigh the losses um, coming into this season. Um, Melbourne Stars are your team, aren't they, mate? Mate, they are my team. I was there at the final last year against the Renegades, and wow, oh, that was a choke and a half, I guess. Um, 
they had no right to lose that game and, and they found a way. And I guess that's the story of the Stars since their inception of the BBL. They find ways of losing games that they shouldn't. Um, playing at the MCG is a unique ground. It's massive and it really should play into their hands, playing two spinners in Zampa and Lamashane throughout the tournament. Uh, Sandeep Lamashane from Nepal is an, he's an absolute gun. He's a live wire. He loves his cricket. Uh, and then not too long ago, Adam Zampa was the number one one-day bowler in the world at one stage. So, you know, he's doing well. They've got a really good squad. I think internationals might might skittle them a bit. But then again, you've got Glenn Maxwell and uh, Maxi and Nick Maddinson coming back from a little bit of a personal um, break. So it'll be interesting to see how they come back. The papers were going wild this morning down here in Melbourne. Um, Glenn Maxwell's declared himself fit, firing and ready to go and ready to show everyone what he's made of and fulfil his potential. Um, and then Crazy Eyes himself, Dale Stain, back from South Africa. Uh, good memories of the MCG for Dale Stain, 72 and 10 wickets, I think, a couple of years ago when uh, South Africa were over here playing in a in a test match at the MCG. So he loves the ground. Um, yeah, stacked. Hopefully they don't lose too many to the Aussie side. Um, that's just me wanting them to do well. But yeah, there's no reason they can't can't be there at the end with the heat in the final. And I've got them sitting second as well. Yeah, but Stain isn't there for long. It's just a couple of weeks, isn't it? Yeah, Stain, Stain's availability is a bit limited. Um, he's retired from test cricket, but he's still available for limited overs cricket for South Africa. So if he gets selected, um, he will be going back over for that that uh, series against England in which we'll be losing a lot of players from the tournament. Um, but if he doesn't get selected, he said he wants to stay around. I think he wants to have a crack at AB when he comes over here. So um, we'll see how that works and we'll see what happens. But like you mentioned earlier, the exodus from the Perth Scorchers this year, we, we spoke about uh, Sean Marsh going to the Renegades, but the stars picking up Nathan Coulton Isle is an absolute bargain. Yeah, yeah. He, he can bowl quick. He bowls really good out swing. He uh, can hit the ball a long way. And Hilton Cartwright, who we all remember debuted for Australia so many years ago now at the SCG and hasn't been sighted in Australian colours since, but uh, he can hit a ball and his fielding is incredible, which you need on the MCG. So, yeah, great side. Hopefully they live up to the standard and, um, yeah, really go well this year. Yeah, mate, they are looking superb, but we'll, uh, we'll move along to the other side of the country, uh, the Perth Scorchers. Um, last year, they finished last. Uh, and this year, they're not predicting too much from them, the bookies. Uh, they've got them at $8 odds. Um, what, do you, what do you think of the Scorchers, mate? We've got, um, they've got a few, a bit of a change up in their squad. Um, they've got Farwood Ahmed coming in, Curtis Patterson, per Patterson uh, Lee, Liam Livingston, Chris Jordan, and they've lost quite a few. The retirement of Michael Klinger, Sean Marsh has moved, like we said, uh, Nathan coulton oil has gone, and Hilton Cartwright. Um, yeah, so I don't know about you, mate, um, but I'm not predicting the greatest season for Perth. Yeah, the Scorchers were an interesting one last year. Um, they have predominantly had the same squad throughout the whole BBL since its inception. A few people retiring here and there, but yeah. not many people have left, and I think that might have contributed to their drop-off last year, just a bit of the same-same. They needed something a bit different, so... The exodus has come. Um, the players have tried to go find something else. And, you know, I, I really think it might breathe a bit of fresh light back into the Scorchers. Um, arguably one of the bigger home crowd advantages that the whole state gets behind them. They, they get there into the furnace at the new Perth Stadium, which is a different pitch in its own right. And I think that I think they, they can be really good this year. They've got a couple of good up-and-coming players. Um, Cameron Green, wow, what a, what a Sheffield Shield and uh, Marsh Cup season he's had so far. He's got Ricky Ponting telling telling everyone to get him into the into the Australian Test squad. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I see them bouncing back this year for sure. Yeah, so I've got the I've got the the Scorchers finishing in sixth, mate. I think um, I think they're just going to miss out on the finals. Uh, I mean, they've got such a great home ground advantage over in Perth, but. I think they might struggle away from home this year. Um, they're not the same side that they used to be, you know, one of the greatest ever BBL sides. Um, and I actually think, even though they came last last year, 
I think they've actually got a worse squad this year with the likes of, you know, Marsh, Klinger, Nathan Coulter, Niall uh, leaving their squad. Um, so what have you got, mate? Yeah, like I said, I got them bouncing back. I got them in fourth this year. Um, I think last year they played a lot of the kids once they realised they were out of it too. Um, they they were crueled pretty early on with Australian team selection last year. And I think once you lose a bit of momentum in these type of tournaments, you're, yeah. Yeah. you're really hard to come back from. And I think once they realised that, they gave a lot of debutantes opportunities last year. Um, and I think that'll come through to fruition this year and they'll really see the benefits of it. I see Ashton Turner. I rate him as one of the best finishers in the T20 in the world. He can hit a ball to all parts. He times his innings really well. And to have him coming in in the middle order after Mitch Marsh, um, really good. Ashton Agar, he he could probably disappear in January and he'll probably go to India as well. Um, I'd be taking him on the tour, but he's one of the better 2020 bowl, spin bowlers we have in the country. Uh, and then you've got the raw, youthful pace of Jai Richardson. Um, <laughs> at Perth, you probably have the keeper halfway to the boundary with how quick he's bowling at the moment. Um, I, I think they've got an all-round side. They've got a lot of keepers, which I think you'll see bit, you know, Cam Bancroft take the gloves. Liam Livingston's a great great addition to their side as well. So um, Chris Jordan, you know, they've got they've got a good coverage across the board. I, I really wouldn't see, be surprised to see them bounce back. Right, we'll move Sydney side, mate. Um, and just off the top, the Sydney sides are looking absolutely terrible this year, mate. Um, yeah, they're not looking too flush at all. But we'll start off with the Sixers. Um, as always, they've got Mo- Moises, on- Moises Onriques, uh captaining them. Um, just have a look at their starting 11 now. Nothing too crazy to write home about. A decent top three. Philippi's a bit unpredictable. But, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I think they did massively overachieve for me last year, finishing in third last year. This year they come in with $9 odds, uh, so I think that's a bit more well-suited to them. Um, yeah, what do, you, what do you see for the Sixers this year? Mate, the Sydney teams this year are rubbish. Um, mm. I'll just put it out there. I, I, I agree with you when you say that they overachieved last year. They did that on the back of Tom Carr, and he took them, he won them many games with the ball and the bat and got them out of trouble. Um, Jackson Bird being classified as an in this year, uh, he's not a T20 bowler. He never will be a T20 bowler and I don't see him adding anything to their lineup. Uh, you've got a couple of young guns like Josh Phillip, he could be anything. He hits the ball so hard and has so much flair. Uh, very unorthodox, but very good. Moses Enriquez is having another... Great Sheffield Shield season, hit 100 off 115 balls against uh, Queensland the other day to get New South Wales to win. But again, it, it comes down to your internationals. Jimmy Vince at the top of the order. He, he was part of the England one day squad. He'll probably get called up potentially for their South African tour and that'll hurt them. Tom Curran the same. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll be really interesting, but I'm not sure. Like They've signed Steve Smith, Nathan Lyon and Josh Hazelwood, but they're not expected to play until the last two games of the tournament before the finals. Um, I think it'll be too late by then. Yeah, like I said, I think they did massively overachieve last year. Um, and I'm just looking through their batting lineup now. I mean, <clears throat> Vince Vince is good, obviously. Philippi's a bit... He's so flary, mate. You don't know what he's going to what he's gonna do. Um, and then you look three and four are okay. I, I trust Enrique. He's an established BBL player. He's, he's a very good player. So I trust him. But the, to be honest, mate, I think their, their middle order is looking very ordinary. Other than that, with Jack Edwards and Jordan Silk, um, nothing to ride home about there, mate. Yeah, like Josh Phillippe, if he bats eight overs, he'll score 100. He's that type of player. If he gets in, he gets in. But... You know, with the flair and the attitude that he takes to his batting, he's just as likely to get out in the first over. And mm-hmm. if you're a betting man and you, you're playing the odds, it, it really, it's a real luck of the draw with Josh Phillippe. Um, Dan Hughes, yeah, he, he's had a great one-day series in domestic competition. Um, whether his strike rate's high enough for 2020 cricket, I'm not sure. And then your middle order is light as anything. Jack Edwards, Jordan Silk. They're not going to hit 50 or 15 balls. They're not going to give you that no. kind of moment. Um, the bowl, oh, I see an issue with their bowling. I see, I see a real big issue with their bowling. Um, Shawnee Abbott's good. He's playing well. He had a great debut for the 
the Aussie T20 side, not just recently, but besides that, Jackson Burr's not a 2020 bowler. Ben Dwarshus hasn't been seen in New South Wales colours all year, and Stephen O'Keefe could quite possibly be the most overrated spinner in Australia. So hey, he took 12 for in India and won us a test match, and everyone thinks he can do everything. I reckon you could turn the ball in India, mate. It's that easy. Um, nah, look, he's a good player. I just, yeah, I, they'll look to target him and they'll take him down. Um, yeah. Oh, I can't. I can't really find too many positives, to be honest. Yeah, I've got them coming dead last, mate. I just, um, I'm just looking at their team again now. Uh, I, they're obviously, I don't think they're good enough to uh, to cut, to make the finals. And then, yeah, it is their it's their middle order that's really turned me off, to be honest. Yeah, I've got them second last. Um, I reckon they crossed down neighbours the worst. So, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got them second last this year. I don't, like I said, I don't think they're going to win enough games early on for Steve Smith to come save them at the back end of the tournament, and yep, that'll yep. be all she wrote. Okay, we'll move the other side of Sydney, mate, to the Thunder. Uh, like we said before, there's not much to uh, to get excited about with this side. Um, it's incredible the amount of players they've actually lost this year. So I'll go through them now. They've lost Shane Watson, Farwood Ahmad, Curtis Patterson, and two Englishmen in Joe Root and Joss Butler. So some ridiculous losses there. And they've brought in Alex Hales, who I really rate. I think he's a great player. Um, and they've also brought in Chris Morris, Chris Tremaine, and the sweepologist Alex Ross. So they brought in some, you know, decent players, but I think their losses far away the buys in this situation. Yeah, they've, de- they've been decimated this year, and there's no other way of putting it. Um... Alex Howes performs his best when he's out with Ben Stokes on a night out in Bristol. So <laughs> I'm not sure how he's going to go in Sydney. But, um, yeah, again, I don't, I don't see too many positives with them. Um, Usman Kawaja decides when he wants to show up and when he doesn't. Um, though, in saying that, his white ball for cricket's been really good this year. So him and Hales are the key. And if they're, if they're going to win a few games this year, I reckon they've got about 10 overs together. And they do that, yeah. they, they'll post good score. Um, they're very young this year. The likes of Matty Gilles, um, Jason Sanger, you know, that, that, they'll be in that middle order and you, they won't want to be exposed too early. Um, Chris Green's a T20 specialist. He's a bit like Chris Lynn these days. He just travels the world, getting paycheck after paycheck. And So, um, yeah, the, the losses are huge. Um, Alex Ross seems to just love playing for any club that will sign him. I think this this could be his fourth club. I might be wrong, but he's definitely played for Adelaide, Brisbane, and now the Thunder. Yeah, no, I think it is Ross's third club. Uh, Because, yes, like you said, Strikers, Heat, um, and now to the Thunder. I I don't think there was a team before the Strikers. So, you know, he's just going wherever he can get a gig at the moment. Um, Yeah. Look, everyone will look into it. The bowling's there. It's not necessarily strong. Daniel Sam's had a breakout year last year and won them a few games on his own. So I don't see that happening anymore. And yeah. Yeah, look, I think their best chance of doing well or winning a few games will be their top three. And I think they will jag a few wins that way. Um, I think Hales is a superb player. Used to be one of the best T20 batsmen in the world a couple of years ago. So, um, yeah, I, I really I rate their top three. I think the, the inclusion of Kawaja, because um, he won't be playing too much for the Aussies anymore. So, um, yeah, I think the experience of Kawaja and Callum Ferguson coming in at three, uh, that top three I really do like. Um, so I think that will jag them a few wins, and that's kind of the only reason I've got them finishing just above the... Uh, the Sixers. Um, yeah, so I have got them finishing in seventh place. Like we said before, not the greatest team. But yeah, I think they will jag a few wins just through the likes of Hales, Kawaja and Ferguson. Yeah, I've got them in last. They might beat the Sixers one of the games that they've got with them. <laughs> and that, might, that might get them a win. Um, look, I was just thinking, Alex Hales was the world number one T20 batsman in for a reason a few years back. Um, he hasn't been given the the opportunity since um, they've reshaped the way that they go about things in their top order in England. But like you said, he, he's class and, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, think they've just got to rely on that top three. Cal Ferguson's been exceptional this year for South Australia. Um, so he, he's confident, he's ready to go. But they lose two early wickets and I, I reckon it's door shut, game over. So... Yeah, look, good good luck to them. You're, you're right, they might might snag a couple of wins here and there. 
They do have the potential to be that team that ruins a couple of other teams' finals chances, though, because if they do show up, they'll be able to knock off one or two of the top teams, and that could have a real big bearing on the tournament. Okay, mate, so that finishes up our preview for each team. Um, so now we're going to go through some overall predictions. So it's pretty obvious that, yeah, we do have the finalists as the Stars and the Heat, and we both have the Heat uh, finishing on top, taking out the Premiership this year. We'll move on and talk about our top run scorers and top wicket takers for this year. We will start off with the top run scorer, mate. Who have you got? I reckon it's Chris Lynn's year. If if the Heat are going to win like we we predicted, I think Winnie needs to go large and go large more often this year than he has before. So I got Winnie on top, um, but don't be surprised if one of the one of the stars players like a Nick Maddinson or Glenn Maxwell quicks and gives him a run for his money. But. Yeah, I, I've got Linny too. He's very hard to go by, mate, especially with the Heat looking so good this year. Um, the thing I like about Linny the most is actually his odds. They're actually very decent. Um, he's They've got him uh, down as uh, $11 odds, Linny. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for a bit of value betters out there, uh, that might be something to jump on. But, yeah, I think he's just your safest bet. Uh, the best ever BBL batsman, in my opinion, like I said before, um, and uh, yeah, there's a good chance this year he, that he's going to uh, that he's going to do it again and score some more runs. Yeah, well, he's likely to play the whole tournament too and not yeah. get selected for any Australian side. So that adds in his favour for that. Um, Eleven dollars, that's juicy. I, I like the sound of that. Yeah, he's certainly a good odds, mate. Um, we'll move on to the uh, top wicket takers. I've got Sandeep Lamishane from the uh, from the Melbourne Stars, and he's at eleven dollar odds too, mate. What do you think? It's a bit, a bit hard for me to go past the number one T20 bowler in the world. Um, good old Rashid Khan for the Adelaide Strikers. I think, I think he's he's going to win him games on his own. Um, it's really interesting. They interviewed uh, Alex Carey a couple of, couple of seasons back, and they said that Rashid Khan is very hard to pick under lights. Um, nine out of the 14 games for the Adelaide Strikers are under lights this year, and I reckon he'll cause havoc with that, Roman. Um, yeah, Rashid Khan on top for me. Yeah, Khan is quality, mate. Um, I can't disagree with you there. I guess the reason I did go with Sandeep was mostly because of his partnership he's going to have with Sampa at the Stars, and I think he's just going to be able to reap a lot of wickets through that partnership. Um, we'll run through our predicted ladders for the top eight now. Um, we both got the Heat and the Stars, first and second. Um, I've got Thunder and Sixes as my bottom two in that order, whereas you have the opposite, Sixes finishing in seventh. Um, we do have a bit of a difference from third to sixth. So I've got the Renegades third, Hobart fourth, Strikers fifth, and Scorchers sixth. Whereas I believe, mate, you have Hobart third, uh, Strikers. Sorry, you've got. So you've got the Strikers in third, Perth fourth, Renegades fifth, and Hobart coming in sixth. So a slight uh, difference there. But yeah, mate, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll see. See, you have to revisit it at the end of the tournament and see how we go. Yeah, we'll see what happens, mate. Um, but yeah, guys, that takes us to the end of the preview. I hope you guys have really uh, enjoyed the preview. If you have, give it a like, share it, show all your friends, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and if you're listening to this just on the podcast, um, yeah, share it around to your friends. Um, this is a TradeMate Sports podcast. So if you're unfamiliar with TradeMate Sports, we're a value betting software. So basically, we, uh, we our software predicts when the odds are too high for uh, certain trades or certain games, football games, uh, rugby games, all that sort of stuff. Um, and it allows you to beat the bookmakers essentially and get some really good odds. Um, so yeah, if you uh, have any questions regarding TradeMate Sports, more than welcome to send us a question on the YouTube channel. Um, but also jump onto our blog and read up about what we what we provide. Um, I'm, the blog's most likely going to give you a lot better uh, description of what TradeMate Sports is than I do. But we also have lots of videos too on YouTube, which is probably uh, another, this is not, another good way of uh, checking out TradeMate Sports. I've been using it myself, um, and you'll see the video series I've come up with on our YouTube channel. Um, yeah, I've made a bit of coin with uh, TradeMate Sports, so I highly recommend it. Check it out. Um, but mate. Jason, I hope you had a lot of fun, mate. Mate, that was an absolute blast. Thanks for having me on. Uh, can't wait to do it again soon. Yeah, lots of fun for me too, mate. And uh, yeah, everyone, enjoy the uh, BBL9 and I'll see you next time.